Hello, I'm Brent Palmer with CRT Services. This is our continuing series on measurement, flow X's, other equipment, just an online series of training and informational videos to uh, hopefully help people along with measurement, measurement questions, and then product specific questions. If there's anything we can do at CRT Services to help answer questions you may have about uh, the equipment that you're using, or measurement in general, flow computers, custody transfer measurement, please don't hesitate to give us a call. If we don't know the answer, we're gonna to try to put you in touch with an industry expert who can also help answer the questions that you may have. Today's topic we're gonna to go over is gonna be the FlowX, and specifically with the FlowX flow computer, the files that are associated with the FlowX and how to use those files in parameters, security, and the application. The other thing we're going to do is look at a historical data file as it comes back and just see the information that's on there. Hopefully I'll show you a few uh, tips and tricks along the way. And at the end, if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, we'll have you chat through or open up your mic and uh, ask any questions that you may have or send us an email at CRT services and we will try to answer any questions that you have. So let's get started. Now I've got an application that's already open on Flow Express, and Flow Express is the programming tool that we use for creating the applications. It's also what we use to update the firmware inside the Flow computer to create reports, displays, parameters, basically everything that's inside that module to tell it what it is. So when we deal with a, a FlowX, we have a piece of hardware, which in this case, if you, if you see on the screen, I have our XS base, which holds a module. And then hardware then needs some software installed on it. So the software we install, we use Flow Express to install it. And then we have an application that's built within Flow Express that gets written down at the same time. Embedded in that application are the parameters, and security files associated with that particular application. Now these can also be separated out so I can pull out the security or the users and I can also pull out the parameters. So the parameters being my IO setups, my meter factors, my tags, the information that I use online in configuring the Flow computer up. What we're looking at in Flow Express right now is an application and this is the US liquid standard application. Now, all of the applications for FlowX, the standard applications, are all free. So when you purchase a FlowX or CRT, the applications come with it. So if you want to change the module to a gas flow computer, if you want to change it to a uh, black loading controller, if you want to change it to a sampler controller, the applications that are standard from Spirit are also uh, available through us or off Spirit's website. And uh, there's no cost for them which is a kind of a nice benefit because you're getting a lot of different applications and you're getting a lot of different functionality for the flow computer um, just by changing these applications. And by doing opening them up just within Flow Express, we're able to change the reports, the displays, and, and some of the functionality to meet exactly what a customer's needs are. So the application is actually, uh, it's filed in an extension called an FXA. Now, I have a, a few different applications on my, uh, my computer, obviously. I, I deal with them every day. But uh, in this case, this is a liquid sampling application. And you can see the name that I have for it. It's just, it's, it's a naming convention that uh, you, can, you can pretty much set up with whatever names that you want. In this case, we just call it liquid underscore sampling. And then we also have a uh, revision number associated with it. Now in Flow Express, you have the ability to do version tracking. So when I open up an application on the left-hand navigation side, I have the ability to add version notes in here. So in this case, we're using a master template, which is called 3.0.0. And you can see my current version is 3.0.0.0. Now I can add in notes in here, uh, whatever I want to set up comm sheet, and then I can add the revision to that. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna put my notations into the application and then it's going to increase the version number. So if I write this application to the flow computer, when I log into a flow computer, and I'll log into one right now that we have, we'll go into uh, 201 let's say. When I go into the system and I go to versions, 
I can see on this one, the application version is 2.2.0.14. As where if I loaded this next application that I just modified in Flow Express, it would, the version number would be 3.0.0.1. The other thing I can do is I can change that name by doing a file save as, and that way I can keep up my, my naming too. So I can say that this is liquids USC master 3.0.0.1, save that. And when I write that to the flow computer, I'll also have that file name saved as the application name. So it's a handy way to look online and see the information that's in the flow computer. We can go quickly again into system and versions and we're able to see not only the application version, the application name, but then also what version of Flow Express that we're running. So the version of Flow Express also handles the firmware. It handles how all of our drivers, our web servers. It's how the hardware functions and it's the different functionality that we add in down the road that's hard embedded, not something that is programmable, per se, but it's, it is how the machine actually operates. So with that, with Flow Express, you're able to go up to help and about, and you can see that I'm running, uh, my version of Flow Express is 3.2.0.12765. Now, if I was to write this application to the device, it would also at the same time update the firmware inside the device. So it's how we do our firmware changes to the Flow computer. So just simply by writing with a new version of Flow Express, you're able to upgrade or downgrade a Flow computer if you go down to a lower version of Flow Express. So if you find something that uh, is, is you don't like about the new version of Flow Express, you can always run the uh, a, a, an older version of Flow Express, and it'll also downgrade your application, not the application number here, but it'll downgrade the application to the same firmware version of Flow Express. Now, every time that we read an application with Flow Express, by simply hitting read, when we read that application, it's also going to create in your documents, so in this case, my documents, it's going to create in Flow Express a received folder, and it's going to create a, another subfolder that has the date, the time, and a copy of that application that you just read down. So if I read an application, and you can see that's going to copy down. In this case, it's a Sinclair Omnimeter 1, and I have a version number associated with it, and it's a .fxa. Now, what else it does is embedded in that application are the parameters and the security, but it breaks them out separately so you have them as separate files if you need them. So I can use this parameter file in another Flow computer, or if I have a group of users, I can take those users and put them into another Flow computer uh, quite easily, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But basically, these, these files are XML files. So if I want to open an XML file, my parameters, along with what the value and a unique index number for them, are all listed here. So this is basically my parameter file as it's written down in the Flow computer. And users are the exact same thing. Now, how do I use these within Flow Express? Well, I can go ahead and get back into Flow Express, and you'll see I have a section called Parameters. So I have the ability to click on Parameters, and then click Load, and now I could go grab that parameter file from, let's say, a download section. I'm sorry, not a download section. I meant to say my documents in Flow Express received, and I had just gotten those parameters from a flow computer that I'd read. So I click on parameters and hit open, and it's gonna go ahead and load those parameters into the application. So working offline, I'm able then to go in and have most of my application already pre-set up by using some parameters from an existing application that may be close or may have a lot of information already preset in it. Now, when I go to write this down, if I'm writing it down to a flow computer, I'll hit write to device. It will compile the application. It's going to check for errors. Now, if it has any errors, in this case, it has a couple parameter errors. So it doesn't like a couple values that are in there. If I want to clear these parameter values out, what I can do is double click 
and it will come up and show me, well, I have a smart meter device set. I want to say that there's no device. And then on the station, I have a remote device number that in this flow computer, there's no device. So we'll try writing down again now. And again, it's going to go through, it's going to compile the application. And then it's going to bring me up with some prompt windows to select which flow computer I want to write it down to, the IP address. It'll show me the versions of the flow computer, what firmware versions it's running. And it gave me some more reports. So that's great, or some more errors. So these are printer errors, errors that uh, I have some reports that are queued up in my virtual space inside my, uh, my computer because I'm running a, an evaluation copy of uh, our newest release. So this is a bug that I'll report back to them. So when I go to help, you'll see that my version of Flow Express, um, this 3.1.2 is actually a, a release candidate down here in the full build ver version. So it's not, uh, it's not gonna be released out yet. But so with these parameters, when I'm working with parameters in the Flow computer, if I open an application, and I want to save these parameters externally, I can click save, and then it's going to give me a prompt and I can save those parameters with any file name that I want and save them wherever I like and put them out there. The same way I can click on security and I can import or load a security file from another location. So again, I'll go into uh, my documents and I'll go to the one that I've received in. And we'll just take uh, something from this one. And I'll grab the security file, hit open. And then it lists a bunch of users that are inside here. When I write down the Flow Express, these will come down. Now, if I want to add a new user into this file, I can add a new user. Put in a full username. Give it a security level. Set a password for it. And I can save this then as a master security file. And I can load these security files to a, a bunch of uh, other devices if I want to. Or I can put them as part, of, embed them as part of this application. And again, when I write down to this application, this will go ahead and write the security files down to it. When I'm all said and done, if I don't want to change this, save this as the new Liquid USC, I can go and say, I'm going to save this as Uh, we'll save it as Brent's uh, application. And I'll put in the version number 3.0.0.1. And maybe I can also put in the date there uh, for 14.20. So that way I know what date this was written down. So I will save this. And what you'll see is along the top, that file name will save and it will change. And then when I write this down to the flow computer, that new file name will be associated with it too. There's also another way that you can get the uh, parameters and the security file out of the flow computer without uh, receiving the full configuration. And it's also a way you can change parameters without getting into the web browser and add users without getting into the full version of Flow Express. You can simply open Flow Express. And I'll go up in the top right and I'll go to the online mode. So with the online mode, I can connect to a device. And we will grab, let's just grab this rent test one. Oh, we'll grab this one, this liquid sampling. Say next. Now I have to have a username and password in order to receive these files down. But I've just put a simplistic password in there of A or a username of A. So you can see it brought in my parameter file and it also brought in the security uh, file that is inside the flow computers. So now I can go ahead and save that and it will save it as a parameter. So if I have pending changes or de the device parameters, I'll select device parameters and I can save this as a parameter file or I can go to the security, save this 
or I can actually open up and load one. And this is a great way if I was looking at a flow computer and I wanted to do a comparison of the parameters, I could go in and pull up the parameters from the last time I ran the flow computer. And again, I will just go in and, and select something real quick from another device. And I'll grab those parameters. And now what it's do, gonna do at the bottom is it's gonna do a comparison against the parameters that are loaded up and the parameters that are actually in the flow computer. So I have a column that says the new values I wanna load down. And then I have the values that are actually in the device. So there's a difference between them. So these are all the differences between the parameter file that I opened up and the parameter file that's in the FlowX. And I could look through these differences and hopefully if I'm just reading uh, the flow computer down now and I have a parameter file from a month ago, the hopefully the, I'm only seeing differences like a density correction factor and a meter factor that I wouldn't see these many, this many differences in there. But it's a very fic, uh, fast way to compare two parameter files and see, uh, see what the differences between them are. And again, with security, I'm able to pull this up. Now, if I was to write all these changes, this will download all of the uh, changes that are listed down here, down to the module that I'm, I'm connected to. I'm gonna show one more thing on the online mode. The online mode also allows you to, let's say, connect to a group of flow computers. And in this case, I've got uh, three flow computers that are online. And when I hit next, it'll ask me for the security and I have to have the proper credentials for uh, each flow computer. You may not have the proper credentials for one of them. Let's see if it's A. So now what it's showing me is I've got two flow computers, this FC test and this 209 that have these users in them. These are common to all the devices. This one flow computer has just this Brent FC, this Brent FC test, just has this let user B in there. So that's a little bit different. But I have three flow computers online. So what if I wanted to add uh, another user into all these flow computers at the same time? I can simply click on new user. And I'll actually add it as new user and I'll leave the name as new user. I'll give them a 5,000 security level. And I'm going to give them a password to get into the web browser. You can see now it wants to write down that new user. When I hit write all changes to device, it's going to go ahead and write to each one of the flow computers that new user in those devices. So it's written down to the new devices, and now that user is inside there and I can go ahead and get out of my system. When dealing with Flow Express, if I just want to go back to, let's say, uh, in this case, the basic mode, we'll go ahead and start Flow Express up again. And now if I want to work with an application that I recently used, I can click on the recent ones to the left, or I can open up a new app, I can open up an existing application, and we'll go ahead and grab that application so we can store these online, we can store them in shared folders, I can send them to another person, and they can open them up and the parameters are embedded, the security files embedded, but they can also be extracted from, from the device and sent separately. So I could just send the parameters to somebody if they wanted to check how the flow computer was configured with parameters. Or I could send the security file. Now, you cannot decrypt a password, and we cannot decrypt a password for a user. And the factory cannot decrypt a password for a user. So if you, if you have a, a user that you're not sure of what the password is, make sure you have a, another user in there that you do know what the password is because you'll run into a problem with these passwords of, um, basically when I look at the security file, I have no way of decrypting what this password is. So I, my choice is to either delete out that user 
or I can add another user in with, the, with the, the same high level and make sure that I have somebody in there at that same high level. But yeah, if you contact the factory and, uh, or you try to contact uh, CRT, there's just no way to decrypt these now. Uh, there's some cybersecurity rules that have come into place where the, um, the manufacturer used to be able to decrypt passwords, but that's not, not an option now. So we can default the unit back to base. We can, uh, there's a way that uh, we can show the user how to do that, but that wipes everything out of the flow computer and it's like you just got it back from the factory. So that is flow computer files. Uh, generically, we're gonna get into uh, some more online uh, trip tricks and uh, uh, some other things that we're, we can do at another session. The last thing I'm gonna show you is a way to retrieve from the Flowex, if we have archives enabled, a way to retrieve out the uh, JSON script of the information that uh, came out. Now we have a whole document on web services and we're gonna go over the web services, the Flowex in another, uh, another lecture. But basically with web services, it's a way to grid gather information or get information out of the Flowex. We have these historical databases that store information in the Flowex and are triggered on periods or batches. And if I wanna retrieve that information out, there's a few different ways I can do it. I can go through the interface here and take a look at them, or I can do a request. In this case, it's called snapshots. And I'm gonna ask this flow computer for snapshots. And what it does is it gives back a JSON script with a unique identifier, along with the tags that I've stored in an archive called daily. So for mod one daily, I get back both the part number, the serial number, and then the tags, and what the tag names are. Now you can see this is from 32620, so it's giving me the oldest file first. To change that, I can change them from snapshots and change the filter to equal ascending equals zero. And well, the newest record that I have is also pretty much the oldest record that I have here. So we haven't, we haven't generated uh, any newer records here, but by using uh, web service queries, we're able to gather and get more information out. So I can save this as a JSON file and import that into Excel and use it in there. I can also ask for the archive de definitions by simply doing an archive. So you can see that I have a mod one batch archive, a daily archive. And when I click on that, it breaks down which individual tags are saved within that archive. And again, I can do specific queries to get that additional information out. So that's the end of this lecture. We appreciate you taking the time to stop in and, and uh, watch what we were doing. Again, if you have any questions or if there's anything that we can answer, please don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. And if you'd like to present or have any topics that you'd like us to talk about, please give us a shout and we'll put them on the schedule. Check back to our website and also our online training schedule. And I'll, I'll put and embed this link in our YouTube site so you can come and see the additional uh, training events that we have coming up and also gives you links to the YouTube videos once we have them posted online. Are there any questions that I can answer? Okay, well, I hope that everybody has a good day. And again, we uh, hope you're safe out there. And if there's anything we can do for you, please don't hesitate to give us a call.